Let me show you a very powerful workflow that can actually help you generate money within the next week or two. So don't be fooled from the very minimalistic setup. This is using Supercode nodes, which are custom NA10 nodes, which I've created right here. We're utilizing two of these and just going directly into an Airtable. And all of the magic is within the nodes. So if I open this up, you'll see all of the custom JavaScript code that I've placed in here. And this is bringing all the power to this workflow. And this helps me get lead data for any business that I want. And I can also get the opportunities of what I can sell to that business as well. So let me show you this in action. I'm going to send a query just restaurant, cans, and AU for Australia. I'm going to press on enter. We'll send that through. And then here we go. We have everything that's just landed into an air table. And we have a few right here, which don't even have any website at all. They don't even have a number on there for some reason, right? Some using Facebook for their website, some are using Instagram, very, very bad for businesses. So depending on all this information that's coming through, depending on their ratings, the reviews, now we get you know opportunities based on what is lacking for that particular business. So even if they have a website, for example, okay, that doesn't mean we can't sell website services. We can still do website speed and mobile optimization, conversion rate optimization, things like that as well. Let's say the reviews were low. So we can see this one right here is a, is a four. You know, it's not the best. So we could sell something like reputation management to help them bring that review score up. And this is all possible from the Supercode node. So if you haven't watched my previous video about a Supercode node, do have a look into that as well. It is extremely powerful and it kind of makes our workflows a lot smaller, but they're actually a lot more powerful than what you can get you know, just on the standard NA10 nodes. And this node's already gotten over 11,000 downloads in a very short period. So people seem to be really liking it. Because I tell you what, normally in NA10, if I was to build the same workflow, you know, exactly the same, right? I would have to have something like this. I would have to have several of these, okay? Because we're doing several HTTP requests here. So this node here is actually doing and performing two HTTP requests at once, okay? Um, this one here is just passing everything. So this is just kind of, you know, taking my chat input here. As you can see, it's just restaurant, cans, AU, and then outputs the pass parts separately. Okay. So that is an inserted in here. And then that kind of, you know, allows it to be placed into the endpoint, which via the endpoint there, we are actually utilizing uh, the openstreetmap.org endpoint. Okay, so that's the first request, and that is giving us the longitude and latitude, which is this right here, based on cans, which is just a city. So based on cans, a city, it's outputting the longitude and latitude, which is then going into the Google Maps endpoint and then extracting the data for us. And you can see this right here. So this is just getting the past parameters from the previous node, which is just this right here. Okay, it's going through. Then we're going through the OpenStreetMap endpoint, which is getting the longitude and latitude. We do have a user agent just in case, you know, there are um, rate limiting issues and so forth too. Um, coming down here, this is then going to the Rapid API endpoint, which is for the Google Maps uh, business data. I've just set it here to a limit of 50. The actual um, max amount that you can get is 500 though. So if you did want to change that, for example, and you wanted to put 500 in there, you absolutely could do that as well. I think 50 is you know, kind of a good amount though. Um, so this endpoint actually requires a longitude and latitude, like I mentioned before, but it's, it would be really annoying to be placing that in manually every single time. So that's exactly why I'm using this open street map to generate uh, the longitude and latitude for us. Now that's then passed over to this endpoint here, okay? And then from there, we are just extracting the data based on the data that we want because, you know, obviously the output has a lot more data. And then from that point, we just have simple data right here. You know, business name, phone, email, website, address, all the way down. And then we just have the business opportunities as well. So if I actually come down here in the code, you can see the opportunities here from the constant right here um, coming down. Now, based on you know, if they have a website, if they don't have a website, we can, you know, give a business opportunity for that particular thing. So in this case, you know, has a website improvement services. So things like search engine optimization, audits and website redesign, website speed and mobile optimization, conversion rate optimization. Um, we do have, you know, reputation opportunities. So if they're rating, you know, like a total rating, not the amount of reviews, but just the rating itself is a four or below, 
then we can get access to things like reputation management and review improvement. So this is and like our very important services that people really, really want because this ensures that the reviews don't dip too far down because that, you know, essentially puts their business under. OK, and they won't get any more business because reviews are bad. Uh, this is the business type specific opportunities that I've made here. So essentially what this is doing is you know a dentist will have different opportunities to a gym so depending on the business type right we are then given uh, different opportunities for that particular niche so you can see right here for the uh, fitness and gyms you know obviously things like member management billing systems uh, online class and booking uh, online class booking and scheduling fitness app or member portal personal trainer booking system okay so these are all going to be different depending on the niche as well so this is not just like a simple we're just extracting information placing it in, in an air table this is a complete you know kind of way to look at several different opportunities from any type of niche for you know any part of the world and you might be wondering how i'm building these really small but really powerful automations well i built this tool called ken a10 right here which just runs in the terminal um, and essentially what we can do is just chat with it to create workflows for us. But it's gotten a huge upgrade because I've also made a custom uh, model context protocol server for it, which means way, way faster results, responses, debugging, and, and so on and so forth. So let me give you a little demo of how this works as well. You can do this with several things, but I'm just going to make it a little simple one for you right here. So I'm just going to say um, make a workflow to get the... Uh, Post articles from Hacker News because Hacker News is a you know public endpoint, so it's easy to get. Um, and output twenty. Let's just try that. All right. So I'm just going to press enter. And we'll just sit here. I'll sit here with you as well, so we can kind of go and see what's happening. So the first thing is what it's going to do is you know get the and use another MCP server that I made, which is just called Can You Remember. Um, there's nothing related to it at the moment, so that's fine. Now it's actually going in, getting the documentation. All right, so we can see right here, fetch from the GitHub API. So it you know, gets an understanding of the actual API as well, so it's not making mistakes. Um, making a little simple plan. Now it's starting to work on the plan, and now it's essentially making the workflow for us. And it's actually going to make the workflow, upload it, and you can see right now this workflow is already done. Okay. So it's already made the workflow already for us. Now it's going through there. Now it's actually deploying. It's also successful. Now it's probably going to test it. Yep, we can see right here, it's going to test it. Let's see. All right, it does have an error, but that's fine because it's now you know identifying the error and obviously from that point can fix it based on the mistakes that it's made. It says it's seen the issue. It's reading the file again, just to be sure you know it knows what it's doing. It's making the edits that we can see right here. Here we go, deploying, it's gonna test again. Let's see now. Come on, come on. And this is just us waiting for it. There we go, success is true, so it is all working. And let's just see, it probably should just come up with a conclusion and just to say, you know, things are working well. There we go. All right, so Hacker News, top 20 post workflow, blah, 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 it's all done. So let's go see this workflow live now in our actual account, obviously. And then there you go. You can see it last updated just now. We'll open this up. There we go. Okay. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, what? It's only two nodes. Well, that's all we need. We don't need to have 20, 30, 100 different nodes. I don't know who's telling you that. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the executions right here. Um, you can see the first one did have an error. That's probably from the webhook, I assume. Yeah, it's just something with the webhook. Um, and then right here, this one succeeded. We can see it right here. And look at that. We have 20 um, articles, okay, uh, from the Hacker News endpoint, all right here for us to view, okay? We could, you know, put that, send it to our Telegram. We could send it to WhatsApp, send it to an email, put it into a database, you know, at that point, it's totally up to you. Now, for this lead scraper here, I will have it down in the description below, so feel free to download it. I will also have the uh, Airtable, 
and you'll also need the endpoint. So you'll need an API from Rapid API. You don't even have to, you know, really do much at this point. All you're gonna do is, you know, sign up for a plan. You can just use a free plan though, which you get, you know, 1,000 requests a month. So essentially you can use this for free without spending a cent, okay? Now, if you do want more, obviously for $3, you get 30,000 a month, which is, you know, at that point, I think it's overkill, but you definitely could do that. But just remember, you will need to download and install the Supercode node, which you can just do via the settings in NA10. I'll have all the instructions down below anyway. And that's gonna be it. If you do wanna get access to all my tools, my NA10 courses, NA10 templates, or if you wanna go a step further and start making MCP servers, get into Claude Code and getting into some really high level production stuff too, feel free to join the community. If I don't see you there though, I'll see you in the next video.